Okay, here we go. MAC addresses. Okay, so we mentioned the IP addresses, right? IP version 4. The addresses are 32 bits, right? Now, we also have a MAC address or a physical address, it's called. This is the addressing at the link layer. Okay, so the IP address is the addressing at the IP layer. Now, at the link layer, we have another addressing scheme known as MAC addresses. Okay, these are 48 bits and they're globally unique. So it's tied into, say, your hardware, right? You have a, an Ethernet card. It's got a MAC address, you know, hard coded into it, right? And if that stays, it always stays the same until you replace the card. Then you get a different MAC address. Um, and these are used when you send the packets over uh, an individual link, as opposed to the IP address, which the routers use to decide where to send the packet, where to forward the packet. So yeah, this is the analogy I mentioned. The IP address is like your home address. You can move to a different house, right? I can take my laptop over to my office, reconnect to the network, I'll get a different IP address. But the MAC address will be the same, because that's embedded in the hardware, the actual hardware that's used on my computer. So the question is, why do we have two addressing schemes? Isn't this just complicated for no good reason whatsoever? In other words, if I'm at the link layer, I could use the IP address to decide where to send this packet. I mean, think about it. The socket uniquely defines the application. You can't get any better than that, right? So why don't I just use that to send my packets over the link layer? IP is a network layer, right? What? IP is a network layer. Okay, if you want to be really, you know, okay, so, no. <laughs> but I could use it. <laughs> so, why don't I just cheat a little bit here and save myself this whole, you know, network, you know, whole other addressing scheme. Why don't I just cheat and use the network layer address at the link layer? Because there are many links. There are, but they would all use the same addressing scheme, right? I mean, they all now use MAC addresses. Why can't I just make them all use IP addresses? It's there in the packet, right? Just look one layer up, right? You'll get it. It doesn't understand that. It doesn't now, but I could change it so that it did. <laughs> okay, what's the real reason? Why do you have this? Well, uh, you're on the right track. I mean, it really has to do with layering, right? Now. Everybody does IP, you know, at the network layer, but it's not the only network layer addressing scheme. There's also IPX, there's other possible schemes. So if you try to use the IP address, you know, the idea is those are supposed to be independent, right? So you could change, you know, what happens up here at the network layer and the link layer will still work just fine, okay? You can change the implementation, you can change the addressing scheme. So there is a legitimate reason. It does kind of complicate things having these two addressing schemes, but you <coughs> technically really do need it. Uh, okay, the protocol I want to mention here at the uh, link layer, there are many, but the one I want to mention here is uh, called ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. So the idea is this. Uh, a packet shows up on your local network, right? The packet has an IP address, right? Okay, that's how it got to your local network. <laughs> Okay, that IP address tells it who it's supposed to go to, right, inside your network. But on your local network, you don't use IP addresses. What do you use? You use MAC addresses. So you have to have some way to look up the IP address that shows up at your door and tell what MAC address that corresponds to. In other words, you have to have a table that keeps track of the conversion between IP addresses and MAC addresses. Okay, so how do you do that? That's what the uh, ARP or address resolution protocol is supposed to do. It's supposed to help you create this mapping between IP addresses and MAC addresses on your local local network. And it's nice, it's generated automatically. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to you know, configure it or anything like that. You just set it and let it go. Uh, the entries in the table, they don't last forever. Uh, typically it's like 20 minutes and then they expire. Why don't you have them last forever? The IP address can change. Uh, IP addresses can change. Even MAC addresses can occasionally change if the hardware changes. So you don't want this stuff to keep staying around forever. So it does expire and you need to refresh it once in a while. Okay. And amazingly, ARP is used to fill the tables in the ARP table, fill the entries in the ARP table. Okay. So use this protocol called ARP. Okay, now 
Uh, from a security point of view, we said stateless is good, right? So stateless, ARP is stateless, that's good. So ARP sends a request and it receives a reply. So in other words, if you're sitting here and you get something, you see the IP address, right? And now you want to route it on your local network. You want to send it out on the link layer, right? And you want to know which IP, which MAC address does this correspond to. But that entry is not in your table. Maybe it expired, right? Maybe it was never there. How do you find out what MAC address corresponds to this? You send out a request, right? And whoever has that IP address sends back their MAC address and you just fill it in on your table. Simple, right? What could be easier? So, okay, so this guy, let's suppose uh, this guy has this IP address. There's this guy's IP address. Here's his MAC address and MAC address, right? Uh, so he's got this ARP table or ARP cache, they call it, because it sounds a lot cooler than table. So let's call it ARP cache. Uh, and he knows that if he wants to send something to this IP address, here's the local addressing he will use. Here's the MAC address he will use, and vice versa. Okay. Uh, okay, now the protocol is stateless. What does that mean? It means it doesn't remember anything, right? In particular, it doesn't remember whether it sent a reply or not. It doesn't remember anything, right? So when, a, I mean, when it doesn't remember whether it sent a request or not. Uh, so whether it sent a request or not, when a reply shows up, Nobody it accepts it, right? Because it doesn't know whether it sent the appropriate request or not. Okay, so that opens up some kind of interesting uh, possibilities here. Suppose, you know, these guys are still sitting here on the local network, just like before. Their ARP tables are just like they're supposed to be. They're correct. This guy shows up here, okay? And what does he do? He immediately sends uh, an ARP reply. Here we go. Uh, after a brief delay, he sends an ARP reply to this guy. And what is he saying here? Okay. Okay, so he sends an ARP reply, and the reply says, hey, if you want to send something to this IP address, here's the appropriate MAC address you have to use. And this guy, he says, okay, I must have sent a request because here's a reply, so I'm going to fill in that entry on my table. And that's what gets filled in there. At the same time, or shortly thereafter, send uh, the same sort of thing over here. Send a reply to this guy and say, hey, if you want to send anything to that IP address, here's the MAC address you're supposed to be using. And that guy fills in the entry on his table, assuming that he had sent a request, right? Because he got a reply. OK, now what? So what's going on here? Man in the middle, right? Anything this guy sends, he thinks he's sending there, he uses this MAC address, so this guy picks it up. This guy doesn't. He ignores it. This guy can, you know, Trudy can sit here and, you know, look at it, delete it, change it, send it on, whatever. Everything goes, goes back and forth through Trudy in this process. That's kind of bad. Okay. So what about this stateless, stateful thing? Okay. Hmm. Maybe that's not so, uh, maybe that's not so uh, obvious, huh? Uh, I mean, here we had stateless, so we don't have to worry about you know, denial of service attacks and stuff like that, but the fact that we don't remember opens up other possible avenues of attack. OK, any questions? Networking stuff? It's a pretty quick review of networking. All right.